Hello, I'm Mark. I work at Earthworks as the maintenance technician here. I keep the equipment up and I'm hoping to share some tips with you all out there about how to keep your equipment up and running through the seasons and through the non-seasons. What we start with is fuel transfer. Fuel comes in from the refineries into the uh, distributors and they bring it to our stations here to, and we pump it out from there. Fuel contamination starts from where they bring it to their tanks to us and then we contaminate it further by putting it into our apparatuses that we run. For instance when you come over here and we look at this chainsaw the first thing you really should do is wipe it off but I didn't do this on purpose so you will see what you're seeing here is these little dirt products that get it all into here as you pull it off they do drop in here and that can't be helped but you can knock it down by wiping it down just a little bit blowing it off do the best you can to keep your fuel clean. If you don't, that's when you have to pull your chainsaw cord 30 to 40 times and you're frustrated, you go back in the house and you start griping at the wife about what she did to your chainsaw. Uh, when we mess with fuels, we try to keep it safe around here. So what I try to do is get a good pair of goggles to put on before I start doing any kind of fueling for the fact that fuel can ruin your day in your eyes. Uh, fuel getting in your skin. Now I'm not wearing gloves, but I probably should be, but either way, the point is be safe before you even get started. When working with fuels, make sure that your room is very well vented. These fuel vapors are very harmful to you and the environment, but we can control ourselves by not being harmed by them. As we start transferring fuel into our tanks here, you'll see that there's a lot of dirt around here. We're dirt farmers. We make dirt look beautiful in our landscaping business. What we try to do is keep our stuff running so our guys do not have downtime. Time is money, money is precious, and so is your fuel. Your fuel is very costly, and it's a very big overhead when it comes to anything you do in your yard. This is how we started out. This is a diesel tank, so I didn't do that right. But either way, here we go. This is your two-stroke uh, uh, tanks. It goes from here into here. And when you take this lid off, this is what happens. This goes into your tank. That's your dirt. And when it transfers from there, it goes into a filter. The filter's either inside your tank or it's outside your apparatuses. No matter which apparatus you're using, whether it's a chainsaw, a lawnmower, or anything that you use at all, or your car even. They've gone from these right here, these filters, to what they call injectors or carburetors. These are what makes your uh, engines run. As you can tell, the orifices are really tiny in the carburetor, so a grain of sand can stop things up in here. This is also one. We are going to fuel injection for better fuel economy. But when you do that, you're using smaller orifices holes, and what will happen is they will clog up these, and then you wonder why your engine doesn't run again. Fuel cleanliness is a big must in our industry. Fuel spillage is also a big costly thing. You have to make sure that you are not spilling it and you're keeping it clean. It's an economy thing for your wallet and for the economy. We don't want gasoline or oil going into our environment either. We pull it out, refine it, we don't want to put it back in. Another aspect of your engine is how it breathes. The engine burns about 4 million gallons of air per one gallon of gas. That's close, give or take half a million. I know that sounds funny, but I didn't get the book out, if you will. And what happens is if you're sucking that much air and you get this problem, you're getting 90% of your air filtered out, but it's that 10% that really damages cylinder walls and gets it back into the air chambers of the carburetor. They do do a swirl pattern in there. Cleaning your air filters. Uh, they're meant to pass air one way. They're, they're built in layers in these things. So when you want to blow it out, blow it the other way that the air came from. And uh, if you can't get it all out, then you can also open this this way and blow it sideways. It just helps. It's not going to be detrimental by no means if you blow it backwards, but it is meant to flow one way. If you think you can't get it clean, Take this 10 cent item, throw it away for your million dollar apparatus to work just right. This is what we call a uh, weed eater engine. As you can tell, a lot of dirt is accumulated around this thing. This is why the importance of an air filter 
would go on here. And when you, as we said in the earlier segment, you take this off, you should wipe this before you take it off. All these threads are covered in dirt. And even though they have a great filter in there, it can't do that much. A little bit of extra time and your cleanliness makes your apparatuses run a lot longer with a lot less problems. And you're not gonna be griping at it, throwing it around. And you know, we all got to temper that way. All right, always have clean rags on hand. Even if it's an old pair of socks, if it's an old rag that you can't use for indoor use anymore. Uh, obviously, me working in the industry, I can always get rags. But please, guys, don't go taking your wife's apron and using it to wipe your hands or your apparatuses off. You won't have only grass problems, you'll have problems inside the house. Your fuels come in with a 10% of alcohol content, as you'll see on your pumps. They do this because the holding tanks will condensate. Alcohol and water will mix to make a burnable subject. But alcohol is also not good for your rubbers, carburetors, things like that that run. Fuel pumps do run on your gasoline's lubrication pro uh, products inside of it. The alcohol is so dry it can burn pumps up. So they have to do this. They have to put alcohol in these things. You guys who are pros, I don't ever recommend that you use the alcoholless fuel. But the do-it-yourselfers, the guys that do part-time, when you're storing your fuels, you do your best to get your alcoholless um, fuels. The reason being is because when they sit is when the alcohol really does work on your internal parts of your, your carburetors, your... your um, your fuel hoses and, and such not that's in there. Um, we do not use alcoholless fuel over here for a reason. It's too costly for what we do. But as I said, you're do-it-yourselfers, it's a good idea to do that and everything, you know, and um, because storing fuel is what you guys who do it yourself do a lot of. In other words, you haven't cut your grass in a month, and your fuel probably still is going to be good because there's good properties that are going to make it keep good. But why take that chance with your equipment that you paid a lot of money for? There's a thing that we should also hit on pretty hard here. When you are transferring fuel into your cans that you're holding for, always take a visual look inside of it because that's where dirt is usually at on the bottom. Doesn't hurt to go rinse it with water or fuel if you have an extra spillover tank disposable tank. You really have to look inside these things, then fill it up and look, if you will. Uh, and another thing, do not fill your cans to the top. Oh my goodness, you're asking for spillage and you're also asking for a lot more problems. When you're also filling your apparatuses up, your fuel tanks, your, your two-stroke stuff, do not do this. Get every drop. You don't ever get every drop because dirt is what you're throwing into your machines then. That's why I say fill one 80% up and use 80% of what you got in here, 80-80. It's just a good rule of thumb. That way you're not dumping contaminants in here because you can't see what's up underneath this lip at all or what's ever over here. And as I said, when you take the cap off, you see this right here. So over time, you will have a lot of debris going into the bottom of it. And if you don't take a quick peek, this thing's full of garbage because somebody wasn't looking at what they were doing. And I don't know if John can get a good look in there and see anything that's going, but these are common problems. You'll always have fun doing your lawns if you keep your machines clean. Clean fuel, do not overfill your tanks. Always inspect your tanks and your machines will always work good. Well, I'm Mark from Earthworks and I will see you on another segment and hope you share your tips with your friends and your pros as well. Thank you.